Well, I started selling books when I was a student at Michigan State because I couldn't find any place around that had the kind of books that I liked. And I uh, started selling science fiction paperbacks out of the basement of a house on MAC Avenue. And um, it, I ran a classified ad in the newspaper and got a lot of response from people saying, hey, you have a lot of interesting stuff. Um, and it was all books that I had recently read. Uh, my degree is in communication. I graduated from Michigan State in 1971. Uh, and um, I uh, wasn't really planning on going into the book business, but it kind of just grew on me. Well, we primarily are a used and rare bookshop. We have a lot of books that for people that uh, just like to read books. So we have uh, 5,000 science fiction paperbacks. Um, I never really uh, planned on running a used bookshop, but it's... Uh, it's fun. Uh, it's a challenge now, particularly with the internet, although we do have a website at CuriousBooks.com. Uh, and uh, there were a number of other uh, new bookshops. Uh, Jock and Dries Books was a very good bookshop here in town, and they closed down. And there have been other used books, uh, including Gibson's, which had a used bookshop uh, in the, uh, here in town. Um, I, I never really planned on... Uh, selling books 40, 50 years into the future. And uh, there are some things that I've sold, certainly I would have loved to have kept and would have made a small fortune on them. But uh, part of it is we try to be realistic in our pricing. We don't sell textbooks. I have felt that selling textbooks was kind of unfair to the student because I was one and I didn't like paying $50 for a book at the time. And now $200 apparently is what some of them are going for. Uh, and so I try to stay away from selling uh, textbooks. We've gotten into selling new books since the Barnes & Noble closed. Uh, and uh, so we have a lot of copies of some of the uh, uh, bestsellers and more recent uh, hot books. Uh, but we have uh, some books getting back to the you know, 17, 1800s. Uh, we have another shop here in town called the Archives Bookshop, six blocks away. I opened that up in 1987 because we were running out of space. And um, they've been uh, selling a lot of different things from there. They have 45,000 postcards and 12 boxes of sheet music. But I'm fortunate to have a good staff of people helping me, and uh, it's, uh, it's been very interesting. Um, we try to have books that are a little bit on the unusual side. In other words, we really don't carry Reader's Digest condensed books or textbooks. We don't emphasize religious books or Book of the Month Club fiction. Uh, we try to have books that we think people will be interested in at a fair price. And yes, we have some rare books. A few years ago, we had a first edition of Dracula, first British edition. And uh, right now uh, we have a uh, uh, first edition of a book by Nietzsche. So we get some interesting things coming through. Uh, and um, the copy of Dracula we ended up selling to someone in England. And it was, a, it was bright, kind of a yellowish cover. I took it to a bookbinder because it had a stain on the front cover. And I uh, told him you know, it's what, it's what his suggestions were to getting it removed. And he said, I don't know if you'd want to do that. I said, why is that? He said, well, it's a blood stain. And I said, oh, okay, I think you're right. And so we didn't have him do anything to it. One thing we had a number of years ago when I opened a shop in Grand Rapids, a woman brought in a copy of the first issue of Superman. And so that was an unusual item. One of the reasons I enjoy the book business is because you can never tell from one day to the next what you're going to find and what people are going to buy. Well, we like having a lot of children's books, um, and we have everything from Alice in Wonderland to The Wizard of Oz and various uh, series books like Nancy Drew and Hardy Boys, and there are things like uh, big little books and comic books. So I think part of it is the eclectic mixture of material that we have. Uh, so we try to have something for everybody, uh, whether you're looking for paperback mysteries or uh, uh, literature books, I, uh, poets you remember or don't remember. Um, we just like having a lot of different things available. We do uh, antiquarian book and paper shows twice a year, and also Classicon, which is a uh, show for people who collect old pulp magazines and comic books and things of that nature. Well, someone said we're an institution, and my usual reply is, yes, it's a mental institution. And um, I certainly wasn't by planned or designed that way. We just try to provide uh, good reading material at fair prices to customers. We have good interaction with them. We keep uh, lists of what they're looking for and go out and try, sometimes try to find things for them. The sad part now is happening is some of, the, some of my better collectors are downsizing. They're 
passing away, they're moving out of town, moving in with their kids. And so I'm seeing some of these collections that I helped build up uh, come back. And uh, uh, sometimes you don't realize uh, when you're buying books and you pick up uh, two or three books a week, how many books that adds up to over a 20 or 30 year time period. And uh, so uh, that's one of the problems that we're having. We're getting so many books that are being brought in and we're trying to figure out where can we put them all? How can we sell them? And so that's where some uh, venues like uh, eBay and having a, a, a website and being on Etsy come to hand. We, and we also sell books at the various book shows too. So I, I travel, I do shows in Chicago and Ohio and various other places exhibiting and selling books too. But uh, no, I'm not really planning on opening another shop or uh, um, moving uh, unless I have to. Uh, and um, uh, although I've had people say, well, gee, you know, we could really use a shop like yours up in and fill in the blank virtually any town except Ann Arbor. Uh, you know, why don't you open one up in Flint or up in the Upper Peninsula? And, um, I just don't, I, well, I have the material. I certainly could because I have a lot of books in storage. But it's a lot of a lot of work involved in trying to in trying to keep a place organized and trying to keep it together is uh, uh, not always that easy. Uh, Nelson Bond, a bookseller out of uh, North Carolina, said it's a very pleasant way to make very little money, and he's 100% correct.